Now, as you can see, our O-rings made it through the whole 30 days. Let's take a quick look and, uh, at the pictures I put together. It took 30 days all the way through. First, we're gonna look at the, uh, on the generic O-rings, day one through day 30. Then we're gonna do the actual fuel O-rings taken from fuel injectors. Let's check it out. Don't fall asleep though. Well, as you can see, there wasn't a whole lot of difference after day one with any of the O-rings. Of course, there was some evaporation on some of the uh, test tubes. Don't really know why that happened. But anyway, it's kind of a, it's a lot like watching paint dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gas and the lacquer thinner out of the test tubes. going to lay the O-rings out. We're going to see if it affected the O-ring as far as in structural integrity. See if it degraded them in any way, made them weak. Let's see.
So now what we have here is everything lined up. Have the test tube to the left and the O-ring that was in that test tube is on the right. So we have generic with gas, generic with lacquer thinner, all the way down the line. Here's the crazy thing about it. It doesn't look like the generic O-rings really changed at all. Looks like they swelled any. When you compare the lacquer thinner up here with the gas one down, it doesn't look a whole lot different. Let's see what strength, if there's any integrity issues. Let's take a piece of, or a piece of, let's take some pliers. In part pretty normal. This one has, this one's sitting in gas. About the same. Let's check out a brand new one. Now this is a brand new O-ring on the generic side. Fresh out of the package, hadn't been sitting in anything. It is a little bit stronger. Let's take another one just to see if maybe that was a really strong made O-ring. Not really much of a difference. But here's what's the crazy thing about the generic O-rings. They don't seem to have been affected very much at all by the gas or the lacquer thinner. I mean, they have been. There's a little bit of swelling, but not a whole lot. Come over here. Brand new one out of the package. That one was in gas. Brand new ones on the bottom. So then we'll move this one over here to the one lacquer thinner. You can see a little bit of swelling there, but not a whole lot. Now we'll just quickly go through and just test each one of these different types. Now after doing all of those in a row, do a new one again. Oh yeah, they're way, the new ones are a lot stronger. Let's do one of these thick ones. This is one of the ones that I had on the end down here. Take one of these, see how much stronger a brand new one is. Not very scientific. I don't have spring scale and all that good stuff, but I figured this would be good enough. Whoa. Yes. So the generic O-rings, they've definitely been affected by the gas and lacquer thinner. They didn't swell up very much, but they've gotten a lot weaker. And you never know, they may get weak with lubrications, oils, anything like that, but there you go, they didn't swell a whole lot. So yes, it did affect them. The lacquer thinner did affect the generic O-rings, but so did gasoline. And it's just a regular set of generic O-rings that you can get from Amazon. Now let's try name brand fuel injection O-rings or fuel injector O-rings made for gasoline. Let's see what happens. Alright, I don't know if you remember looking at the pictures I took every day for 30 days, but these have swelled considerably. Here is a regular AC Delco O-ring that's been sitting in gas the whole time. 
Now let's compare it to an AC Delco sitting in lacquer thinner. It appears that the lacquer thinner has made the fuel o-ring swell considerably. And you can definitely tell the different color. Took some of the color out of the o-ring, but let's get them all out, see what happens. Now talk about experiments where a result happens that you would not expect. That's what I have with these. Now these are actual fuel injector O-rings from name brand companies. The one on the right was in this test tube, was soaked in gas for 30 days. This one it was in this test tube and lacquer thinner. Look at the difference. Huge difference. Every single one of them, no matter what company, whether it was AC Delco, remember old Victor, we talked about him, Fell Pro. Then we had AC Delco again, go right back to Victor and Fell Pro. So I didn't expect that at all. If you remember the first video, I talked about how I thought it really wasn't going to affect them a whole lot because gasoline is a harsh chemical, it's caustic, whatever. Whatever scientific name you want to give to gasoline, it's some pretty bad stuff. But lacquer thinner definitely affects fuel O-rings, fuel components, rubber components, gaskets in a negative way. Now, this is 100% lacquer thinner. Nobody's gonna do that. Nobody's gonna put 100% lacquer thinner in the gas tank and run their car off of it. I understand that. And even if they do, they're not gonna let it sit for 30 days. But another thing is, most of this happened in the first day. I mean, after that, 29 days, it seemed like it really didn't do a whole lot. But it goes to show you how quickly lacquer thinner can affect rubber components. But just like we said, if you put lacquer thinner in your gas tank, half a tank gas, one gallon of lacquer thinner, this is not going to happen because you don't have 100% lacquer thinner hitting all your rubber components. Now let's come on down here and let's check and see if they have gotten any more brittle. Just like the generic ones did. Alright, this is Fell Pro came apart pretty simple. I mean, they have to put any effort into that really. Fell Pro with gas. Yep, it got a lot weaker, no doubt about that. Let's see how Victor did. Too easy. Broke apart, broke into pieces. Mm. Victor is pretty strong. All right, that was pretty strong. But AC Delco, any Chevy guys out there? Oh yeah, no problem. They seem to be getting easier to break apart. <laughs> AC Delco actually wasn't very strong sitting in gas. Now let's just start over. We have all three of the same brands again. Fell Pro. Broke apart easily. Uh, that's some reasonable amount of strength. Fell Pro seems pretty strong. Good old Victor. Fell apart easy. Victor, pretty strong with gas and my last AC Delco. I mean, it, AC Delco comes apart. I mean, I can even do this with my hands a bit. 
this hand easily. See that? One piece. Pulls apart just like that. And go back to the last AC Del code. Whoa, that one's pretty strong. That's a good one there. And there you have it. So final thoughts on this project is it was a success. Something that I thought was gonna happen did not actually happen. So it's a success. I mean, that's why you do experiments. As the Grinch said, that's what these tests are for, right? But I'm really surprised at how much of an effect lacquer thinner had on gasoline rated O-rings and not on the generic O-rings. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But one thing's for sure is it did make all the O-rings brittle. You make the decision on whether or not you want to put lacquer thinner in your car. I do know that I've talked to people that have said lacquer thinner helped them pass emissions. Uh, so if you're in a state, which I live in Alabama, we don't have emissions testing, but if you live in a state that your car fails emissions, one of the best things you can do is you can try half tank of gas, one gallon of lacquer thinner, pour it through your car, into the gas tank, take it out on the highway and run it for a while. Um, 150 miles is uh, what some people say, 100 miles, something like that. Or you can go until the light turns off. Say if you got a light that's on and it's actual catalytic converter light, maybe it would work. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Thing about it is, it's worth a shot. Some people say that you can even just put real good gas in your car. Let's say you normally have just cheap gas or something like that. It may be worth it to go fill up your tank. If you don't want to try the lacquer thinner, fill your gas tank up with really, really good gas. Maybe do some kind of Tecron additive from the auto parts store, put it in there, run that sucker at highway speed, 70, 75 miles an hour. If you're mainly doing in-town driving, commuting real slow, that may actually get your catalytic converter hot enough if it's still working properly and to be able to burn off the things inside the catalytic converter that normally can't burn off because you don't give it a chance to on a small, short drive commute. All those things are cheap things you can try before going expensive, before paying a mechanic $100 just to diagnose something on your car or just to tell you that you need a $1,200 catalytic converter. Try those things first. Now, you saw me try lacquer thinner in both of my vehicles. I have no gas leaks in either one of them. So yeah, we've proved here 100% lacquer thinner can harm rubber components in your car. But as far as what it did to my vehicle running over the amount of what people like Scotty Kilmer say to put in it has not harmed my vehicle at all. So that's why I say it's up to you what you do to your vehicle but it's worth a shot. It's better than paying thousands of dollars on something that you don't need changed. So I think it's safe to try. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you have a great day. See you next time.